Thank you so much for being here this morning. I'm really excited to share a work in progress. It's a teaser uh, because I will be presenting the final working code uh, this summer at DH 2019, uh, but I will share where I'm at so far. So uh, you are free to tweet any of my comments, um, any of the slides, anything like that. I am at through the underscore veil. And if you'd like to follow along, um, also see more details than I have time to present this morning, you can check out uh, the bit.ly link, uh, which is garcia-globaldh19. Give you just a moment if you want to pull that up. In 1724, two Ottoman governors combined forces and set out to bring the rebellious Algerian tribes to heel. In the eastern province of Constantine, shown up on the map, they, were, they successfully took the mutinous Hananicha tribe by surprise. And the Hananicha are located in the farthest eastern part of the eastern province of Constantine. In the midst of defeat, the sheikh of the Hananicha, Bouaziz, prepared 8,000 head of cattle and goods to turn over to the Ottoman conquerors. Before he could deliver the property, however, his daughter, Yulgia, mounted her horse in her most resplendent clothing. She rallied both men and women and launched an assault that drove the Turkish army back. Songs and oral traditions of the Hananicha, recorded in the mid-19th century, still recalled her heroism more than 100 years after her bold actions saved her community. Yulgia is not the only remarkable woman in Algerian history, however. This project seeks to decolonize knowledge about Algeria, as well as the archive, by repurposing digital tools to surface the most marginalized voices and experiences. It uses text mining to read the available source materials against the grain. In combination, text mining, close reading, and network analysis enable us to uncover the stories of both exceptional and ordinary women who lived between 1567 and 1837, the period in which Algeria and this eastern province were in Ottoman territory. In humanistic research, named entity recognition is highly useful, but it only mines surface data rather than revealing the complex nature of relationships between entities. As a test corpus, this project uses four OCR'd, or digitized OCR'd and hand-cleaned 19th century French chronicles of Ottoman Algerian history. The first step is to identify the entities who form the relationships. Using another tool from Voyant Tools uh, called Context, which is a concordance tool, this helped us to identify specific patterns of relational data so that the relationship could be modeled correctly. So in the example here, we see that uh, Muhammad needs to be represented as the son and Salabe as the father. In our, uh, my first attempt in writing this code, it's not perfect yet, <laughs> uh, which is why I'm not presenting the entire code today. Um, you can see I'm using the Spacey library for Python, uh, which includes a French language model, uh, which is very important for the text I'm using. It also includes a tagger, a parser, and named entity recognition built in. Uh, and then you can see here that I'm looking for a set of keywords that indicate relationships, such as mère, père, mother, father, um, these kinds of words. One of my graduate students, Veronica Dean, and I have been working to code the relational data by hand in Recogito uh, as a way to test this uh, proof of concept through a network graph. So you can see here uh, that in Recogito, the blue highlights are people for um, uh, highlights named people, uh, and then we just tag those. And then you can also hand define the relationships between them. Here uh, in the uh, network graph that is the result of all of that hand coding, uh, we see that the red nodes indicate women, and in graph uh, language, their nearest neighbors. Um, as we think about social networks, these would be a woman's uh, closest relationships, as defined in these texts. 
So we will use measures such as between the centrality and subcommunities to further explore the roles of women when we have a more complete network graph. So this is just based on one source and we have multiple sources to go through. So I want to highlight just one story that has emerged from the network graph analysis, the story of Deika and her family. So we see here in the upper left-hand corner, Boudiaf, who is the sheikh of a mountainous tribe in Algeria. Uh, his daughter and his sister-in-law married Bou Henek, who is an Ottoman uh, provincial official who came over from uh, what is now the area of Turkey. And after marrying into Boudiaf's family, he was able to quell the rebellion in the mountains and bring peace to the region. His daughter then uh, married another high-ranking Ottoman official named Hussein Bey, who became the provincial governor of this region after his father-in-law. Then Hussein Bey's daughter married another high-ranking Ottoman official, Abdallah Bey, and this daughter was named. And Deika, like her mother and grandmother before her, in marrying an Ottoman official, gave that official legitimacy in the local province. He proved his worth for that office by creating a strong alliance through marriage with a local family. Marriages between Ottoman administrators to Algerian women and their mixed ethnicity daughters not only formed alliances between the officials and local Algerian elites, but also to former governors as well. Generations of interconnections formed powerful Ottoman Algerian indigenous ruling families through which access to local power was transmitted through women rather than solely from father to son. And this is kind of a, a unique finding. The historical literature has ignored such connections and the role of women in creating avenues to high provincial office. Well, Deika may be exceptional in that she is named in the sources rather than simply existing in the shadows as someone's daughter or wife. The counsel that she provided her provincial governor husband was not unique. These highly educated women who married Ottoman officials could also provide essential intelligence related to local culture and political contexts for their husbands. In addition, these marriages also provided the provincial Ottoman governors uh, sort of a safety net because they were connected to uh, powerful local families. So my process of encoding relational data has proven an effective way to begin to uncover the positionality and roles of Algerian women between the 16th and 19th centuries. The final workflow in Python script will automate much of this labor-intensive process. It will prove useful in social network information extraction, visualization, and analysis, particularly for identifying marginalized peoples. Consequently, the code and workflow details will be openly available on GitHub for other scholars to explore and tailor for their own projects. Stay tuned for more details this summer. Thank you.